good afternoon and welcome back ladies, gents and Pikachus to another analysis and breakdown of the Quran of the Muslims! Yes, we'll be breaking it down again, verse by verse, into factual logical statements in English so we can understand who or what is Allah, what does he mean by the message in his book and more importantly for us non-believers, how does this affect us in our lives in the world today? So, as I do every time before I start, I'm going to tell you now if you have any doubts as to the statements I will make now or have previously made or my factual accuracy, please first buy and read one of these and then after having done so you'll recognise every single word I'm about to say now is 100% factual of Allah and what he says here and also what Muslims believe today. So, if you've been keeping up with the series you'll remember that in the last episode we went through um, some of the emotional trauma which Allah has been suffering because the Christians seem to be doing very well despite him prophesizing that they would have curses, diseases, no money, no lands and be doing really poorly. In fact, in his own words, their technology is so good, it's like magic. And he's telling his Muslims, don't you dare think about going over there. Don't be worshipping their Christ. Remember, we've got our own Christ who only likes Muslims and who was born in Mecca. So that's the guy to follow. And if you don't like it, <coughs> off with the head, you're dead. In addition to that, he was saying that his, uh, his Muslims are actually the, the future of the planet. And he was going through some reasons why historical sources will support this view, despite the fact that they really don't. Um, one of these was Abraham, and he was saying, Abraham's a Muslim, so you should all be Muslims. Uh, Abraham's never worshipped anyone else, so you shouldn't either. Despite the fact that Abraham actually did, in his own words, previously worship Elohim, this guy. <laughs> so, with that in mind, let's carry on. 73. O ye Muslim, grudge on the non-believer and only trust faithful Muslims. Say to others, quote, You shall fear and obey only Allah. True rev revelations are sent only to others from you, O believer Satans. Unto you hath been sent only curses and Allah disease. End quote. End of verse. <laughs> so, to start with, um, we can tell here that Allah is cornering his Muslims with a message that is only for them. We know this because he starts off, O ye Muslims. And the message to OE Muslims is hate those non-believers a bit more because I'm not happy with the current level of hate that you are showing them, O Muslims. And we know this because he uses the term grudge. Grudge on the non-believers. Like, literally don't let them get away with anything. All the stuff we're blaming them for, insulting our prophet and our lands and uh, stealing the bounty that Allah has given us, you know, despite the fact that he put it in their pockets, it's ours. Because they're doing that, grudge on them and only trust faithful Muslims. So he's literally saying, those guys, I don't care what you know about them, I don't care what they do or say, they can't be trusted based on their religion or their uh, ethnicity, i.e. Allah is very racist. And then he says, only trust faithful Muslims. So he's making the point here, Muslims, if you come into contact with these guys, don't bother with them because they'll just lie to you, they're evil and bad and nasty, evil Satan Jews and rabble shepherd Christians, they are the enemy. O Muslim. Then he goes on to say, say to others, like, when you do come into contact with them, because obviously you have to be horrible to them and not speak to them, this is what you say to them, O Muslims. You say, and I quote, you shall fear and obey only Allah. True revelations are sent only to others from you, O unbeliever Satans. <laughs> so, breaking it down, what he's saying here is, he's mentioning revelations, which is interesting because According to when this was written, revelations shouldn't be out yet, which means this was written far later than uh, we are told by the Islamic scholars. So revelations is part of the Gospels, which was written far after the life of Christ had already finished and he'd gone to heaven. And one of the things that revelation says is the scriptures that come out of the Islamic world are going to mention you, Christians and Jews, but don't believe them because there's no factual basis to any of it. And that is why Allah here is saying, true revelations are sent only to others from you, O unbeliever Satans. So Muslims, you have to tell those guys, when they're talking about their Gospels, revelations particularly, you have to say, no, true revelations only get sent to us. All your revelations are not true. Yours are fake, ours are real. And remember, we've got our Jesus son of Allah guy, so your one's not real. That's what this means. Then he finishes off the first by saying, 
O unbeliever Satans, whom you have been sent only curses and Allah disease. So he finishes off by saying, O Muslims, tell those guys that they're cursed and they've got Allah disease. That's the only reason they've been seeing any success. It's not because they are um, really shrewd tacticians in battle and they're really good at saving up money and their education's brilliant and their technology's good. <laughs> no, it's nothing to do with that. The reason they're doing well is ooh, Allah is mind controlling them into doing well because it's all part of his plan. Secret agent Allah has planned for them to do well now and build up resources so in the end times genocidal prophecy all us good faithful Muslims can go over there, ransack them, take all their money and bring it back here and give it back to Allah who of course it really is uh, the rightful owner of. Then he goes on to say, Ye faithful Muslims, you should obey, not argue with the commands of Allah, lest you not receive such revelations say as in now say to those guys again all the world is allah's bounty he grants this to those whom he pleases though you understand it not for allah knows all things and is the greatest of plotters end quote end of verse so i feel like this is a this is a nice little intro for what the rest of this page is going to be like and i feel like the Originally, if you remember, the Quran was supposed to be Allah's life story. So we were going through the chronicles of Allah and what happens to Allah. And obviously he said he knows the future and he has predetermined everything. So literally the whole point in his Quran was to tell his Muslims what the future was going to be. And that future was going to be these guys poor and um, their wives cheating on them, their leaders killing each other and having no money and no leaders and dead by the hand of the Muslims and the Muslims were going to have all the good stuff no disease no poverty no curses loads of money and only see victory but because that hasn't been what's happening Allah in his grace and mercy and wisdom just keeps getting these things wrong now he has to keep reminding his Muslims why they should be faithful and that means he can't tell his own story I think he's actually forgotten that it's his own story Oh, I feel sorry for you, Allah. I'll try and be nice when I tell your story. So as you can tell, I'm trying to be more generous to Allah now. I've had some criticism from some Muslims who say, you're a biased evil Jew. So fine, I've stopped swearing at Allah. I'm trying to be nice to him. Um, and that is why I'm finding it very difficult to read you this because it's difficult to be complimentary about a guy who writes a story solely about himself, but halfway through it gets really distracted by the fact that his enemies are doing really well. <laughs> so... Ye faithful Muslims, you should not obey those guys. That's what he means. You should not argue with the commands of Allah, who is, you know, the commands of Allah are ignore those guys. Don't pray for their technology like you have been because you can't have it. And just get on with your worshipping. Do the Allah stuff, do the Quran stuff, and don't argue or disbelieve. That's the commands of Allah. Then he says, if you argue with the commands of Allah, you will not receive such revelations as those ones over there that I just told you aren't true. It's what it says. If you don't believe me, read it by yourself. It's not me that wrote it. It's Allah that wrote it. Allah said that, even though it's ridiculous, that is what he says. And then he also says, O oh Muslims, keep saying to those um, naughty unbelievers that we're grudging against, all the world is Allah's bounty. That's what you have to say to them. All their cool technology and the money that they have, you know, the stuff that's building their whole civilization into a far more advanced one than we are in, O oh Muslims. That stuff all belongs to Allah, really, so you've stolen it, O oh disbelievers, and that's what you, O oh Muslim, have to say to them. Say, and I quote, All the world is Allah's bounty. He grants this to the, those who he, he pleases, though you understand it not. Well, that's interesting. So breaking it down, Allah's making excuses for the fact that his bounty has ended up in the pockets of Christians and Jews. And how we know this because he says first all the world is Allah's bounty tell those non-believers this but then he says in a sly way of convincing his Muslims while they're talking to the non-believers Allah grants this to the, those whom he pleases though you understand it not see what he's doing there he's saying you guys have currently got the money because it's all part of secret agent Allah's little mind control plan and even though you don't understand why he would give his enemies all the money and not give his own troops any of that money, and you'd have all the technology and education, and why his own guys wouldn't have any of that stuff, but it's all part of the plot and you just don't understand it. And then he confirms this is the case by saying, For Allah knows all things and is the greatest of plotters. So yesterday he was the greatest of deceivers when he was figuring out how he was going to deceive and kill the non-believers. 
Now he's more focused on convincing his Muslims that this is all part of Allah's secret plan, so he's now the greatest of plotters. And I feel like that really much just explains itself, doesn't it? Allah's insecurity has racked him so bad, he's forgotten his story, he's even forgotten the non-believers, now he's just solely concerned with making sure his Muslims don't want to leave or become Christians, because that wouldn't be cool. That's not what Allah wants at all. What he wants is for his Muslims to have enough stuff and money to build up a force and go and kill those guys, those horrible Jews and Christians we hate and want a genocide. But we can't because they've got all the money and they've got all the success and they're tougher than we are. So Allah's saying, we'll be back guys, this is the plot. You don't understand why you've got all the money. It's all part of my plan. Honest, you know, trust me bro, that's what he's saying. That's what this means. 74. But his special mercy, he reserves this solely just for those who fear only he and do his will. He surely is the Lord of power, giver of all bounties. End of verse. So a shorter verse this time. Shorter verse and to the point. Um, and it starts with the word but. So even though it's a new verse, obviously Allah's not very good. His literacy is terrible. He's not very good at writing. He's finished saying, ye faithful Muslims, tell those horrible evil Jews and Christians this. By the way, all your money actually belongs to us, and Allah's only given it to you because it's part of his little plan, secret agent Allah, mind control plan, that's the thing that you're supposed to say to them. But, for his special mercy, i.e. better than that stuff that they've got, his special one-time only special offer uh, mercies from Allah, he reserves solely just for those who fear only Allah, so not the people who are obeying Jesus Christ, son of Allah, in the last episode, not those guys, specifically only the guys who follow him and no one else they're going to get the special mercy and that's why they are only going to fear him and do his will because they want that special mercy and then it caps it off with a little a brag about himself to his muslims he surely is the lord of power giver of all bounties now i wonder why he feels the need to say that to his muslims well he surely is the Lord of power because those guys are powerful and he can't kill them, neither can his guys. They're right over there, remember? The, the non-believers are no longer across the world doing horrible naughty sins. Now they have come here on big powerful ships, set up little camps on the beach, and they are literally right there, right next to our town. A minute ago we were saying, we're going to go and kill them in a big genocide of war, but they weren't there so we could say that. Now they are literally stood there in loads of metal armour with swords and loads of money. They're converting some of us to be Christians, O oh Muslims. So we have to make more excuses to our Muslims why this is the case. And the excuse is, it's all part of Allah's secret agent plan that you don't understand. Surely he's the Lord of all power if he's that clever that he can do this plan and trick them into thinking they've got all the power. And he's the giver of all bounties, i.e. their money actually came out of Allah's pocket. They're just borrowing it. That's what this means. Uh, we'll carry on. 75. Remember, amongst you are some who, if entrusted with the entire bounty, would repay every coin. The good and faithful Muslims. But those people of the book, those evil Christians, you cannot trust them with even a single loaf. And they would not repay you even if you stood demanding for days of hours. They would say, and I quote, We will not honour those who are not of our own book and cloth. But they lie. Allah loveth them not. End of quote. <laughs> so we get into the humorous bit now. So the, the start word is remember. So Allah is saying to his, his uh, Muslims, remember this thing that definitely happened even though you weren't there to witness it. And I'm just making it up now. That's generally what remember means. Remember, amongst you, O Muslims, are some of the most trustworthy, lovely people who I could give you all the bounties of the world and you wouldn't spend a single penny of it. You'd obviously keep it and then give it back to me. But those evil Christians over there, they can't be trusted at all. You couldn't even leave them with a loaf of bread. They'd just eat it. They'd never give it back. And the proof of this is they wouldn't repay you even if you stood there asking them to for a whole day of hours. So don't like those guys, even though they've got all the money now, don't trust it is what Allah is saying. Don't trust those guys. Don't trust their success. Listen to me and worship me. Do my Quran stuff. Get on your knees and pray. Otherwise, you know what will happen. And then he finishes off by saying, after you've done that, O Muslims, you then say to them, I know we're saying a lot of stuff to our enemies here, which is probably not really going to happen. But anyway, Allah is commanding you, O Muslims, to go over there and say, and I quote, we will not honour those who are not of our own book and cloth. But they lie. Allah loveth them not. 
So what he's saying there, it's kind of a bit weird how he's written it, but he's saying, Muslims, go over there and speak to those Christians and tell the Christians of themselves, and it's in a quote bubble, so I know this is accurately how it goes, you are Muslims have to go over there and tell this is tell the Christians this is what you think of them and what you're going to be saying about the Christians is this is what Christians say we will not honor those unless they read our own book and wear our clothes that's what he means by we will not honor those who are not of our own book and cloth unless you're dressed like a weird priest you know a Christian guy or you've got a Bible you're not to be trusted and we will not honor your debts but they lie, Allah love, love of them not. So it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is definitely what it means. The Muslims are saying to the Christians, Christians, you are not honorable to people who aren't like you. You're racist, basically. That's what the, the, the um, implication here is. You won't be nice to anyone unless they look exactly like you and they read only your book, but they lie and Allah hates them. Which is very ironic considering we've spent the entire time reading the Quran of the Muslims, finding out that it's actually the Muslims that feel like that. And as we know, the Christians are now on the shore and not killing you. So even though Allah's trying to make out their racist, they secretly want to kill you, and he's woo -woo, mind controlling them in order to make them do that, they're just sat there guarding their own ship and their camps, slowly converting Muslims into Christianity one at a time. So actually, this is a lie. This is outright just a lie from Allah telling his Muslims, those guys are not honourable. They'll steal from you. They're only nice to people who are just like them, who dress like them and read their book. And if they try and tell you otherwise, they're lying. Despite the fact that they can see the camps and they're not getting attacked by them. So anyway, Allah wrote it. I didn't. That's what Allah said. If you don't believe me, buy it and read it to yourself. And we move on. 76. Nay, those without virtue and honour, the enemies of Allah that keep their plighted faith, will be justly destroyed. Allah loves only those who work for the advancement of his holy tasks. End of verse. So if we break this down, starting with nay, even though he's just gone through the bit about Muslims go over there and tell the Christians they're pieces of crap who can't be trusted, and by the way, you can't trust them because they only like people who are just like them and you dress like them, he starts off by saying nay, so he's disagreeing with something. And what that makes me think, ladies, gents, and Pikachus, is there's another bit missing from here. Imran, in his grace and mercy, in his wisdom, has obviously seen fit to take a piece out because there's no way you will make a claim about the Christians in the voice of Allah and then immediately say no as if that's not true. So Allah is not saying nay to disprove his own previous comment. Something has been removed and he's saying nay to that. But anyway, nothing to see here. Let's carry on with the reading. Then he says, those without virtue and honor, those guys, the enemies of Allah, they keep their blighted faith and will be justly destroyed by you, O Muslims, in the next bit, in the end times genocidal prophecy. That's the bit we're getting towards. Allah loves only those who work for the advancement of his holy task, which is killing Jews in the holy jihad, taking all their money and giving it to the mosque. So if we break it down, this is Allah just making sure that his Muslims know those guys are scummy, disgusting, evil little sons of bitches. And we know this because Allah's telling you this, O oh Muslim, even though when you speak to them, they're really nice. And all they speak of is like truth and honor and beauty and grace and all the stuff out of their Bible, which they are trying to give you for free, along with a load of food supplies. And look how cool their technology is and how they got here on this great big ship, which we don't know how to build yet. But anyway, they've got plighted faith, even though all this stuff's happening. Remember, all the good stuff's from Allah. Mind control, that's how they're doing it. They've got plighted faith, and they will be justly destroyed by you, O Muslims, just as soon as we figure out how to actually match them in battle, which currently we cannot do. Then he finishes off by saying, Allah loves only those who work for his holy jihad advancement, which means figure out, guys, how we're going to kill those guys. Even though I said in an earlier verse it was already planned and everything was predestined, that has changed. Now we have to figure out how we're going to match these guys in battle with their better technology and weapons. And if we do that, or rather, if you do that, O Muslims, because Allah's not going to help you, if you do that, O Muslims, then Allah will love you. Okay? <laughs> and that's the end of that verse. So we move on to the last verse, number 77. 
they did sell their faith for mundane riches and only a short time for victory in travelling. But what they do win for themselves, do they owe back to Allah? Allah will punish them rightly on the last day and strike them down in furious evil fire. And their stolen bounty will be yours, O Muslims. End of verse. End of reading. So, I feel like this is the most important bit of this whole page. Not like he usually does this. Usually there's a jumbled up bit and we have to sift through it for the meaning of the page. But I feel like this last bit tells us everything we need to know about what Allah is saying here. So he starts off in the breakdown saying they did sell their faith for mundane riches and only a short time for victory in traveling. So Allah's now recognizing despite his earlier prophecies that this would never actually happen. Allah himself is recognizing in his own narration that these guys over here have lots of victories and money and are doing pretty well despite him prophesizing they wouldn't. And he's saying they bought all that stuff. They didn't design any of that stuff. That technology is not really theirs. That ship isn't really theirs. Their victories and their successes are not down to them. They just bought it off someone else. And it's only going to last for a short time anyway. Because remember, Allah's mind controlling them into his secret agent plan. So we can go over and kill them. But what they do is win for themselves money which is not theirs. Remember, it's Allah's bounty which is for you, O Muslims. But what they do win for themselves, do they owe back to Allah? So he's saying, those guys there, all that stuff is mine. They shouldn't have it. Even though I said I predestined everything and I write the path of every man and that I wouldn't set up my enemies, I'm really not happy that they've got all this money. It's mine. I want it. And it's just for you guys because you have to go and kill them for me because I can't be bothered, says Allah in the book. And then he finishes off the verse by saying, Allah will punish them rightly on the last day, i.e., when you, O oh Muslims, get your lazy backsides in gear and you get to achieving the end times genocidal prophecy for me, which is the whole point of the religion of peace. It's to amass lots of Muslims and go and slay everybody else who is not a Muslim. Take the bounty which Allah claims that he made for himself and just left with them and give it back to him through his mosque. That's how you're going to do this, Muslims. And if you do that, Allah will love you. They will be punished on that last day. And they will be struck down in furious evil fire. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it is Revelations, or it might be Zechariah. Anyway, there's a part in the Bible. It's definitely 1723, because it's in a, a famous film, which I will not name. And there's a quote which is out of the Gospels, which ends, And then I will rain down furious evil fire, which is God speaking to one of his enemies. So isn't it just a thing that that turns up here in a later scripture by Allah when he says Allah will punish them rightly on the last day and strike them down with furious evil fire. It's like he's read that bit. He's literally read that bit out of the gospel and thought that sounds absolutely awesome. I'm going to definitely steal that and put it in my book. So that's what he did. And he finishes off by saying and their stolen bounty will be yours, O Muslims. And that is the end of our reading. So in summary, O oh Muslims, this whole page is about Allah saying, those guys over there, they're only doing well because of me. It's all part of my secret agent plan. They're deceiving you when they tell you that they got there themselves and that they're here to do a friendly Christian mission for you. So don't go and be Christians or I'll kill you. And by the way, if you do what I tell you, we'll figure out a plan to go and rob those guys and kill them. And then the bounty will be yours, O oh Muslims, but only if you remember that the only reason that you have this bounty is so you can give it back to Allah in his mosque in service of the holy jihad when all those guys and everyone else get <coughs> headlessly decapitated and killed for the end times genocidal prophecy of which the religion of peace has the goal of completing. And that is the end of today's video. So I hope you enjoyed that and you learnt something and I will see you lovely beautiful people in the next one. <laughs> Bye now. That's all for today in our reading of the Quran of the Muslims. Catch me up tomorrow at 7.15am for more inane ramblings of the illiterate warlord and his god. In the meantime, have a great evening. God bless you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.